This session is migrating forms to the cloud uh, using Application Express. And my name is David Peak. I'm the product manager for Application Express. Uh, been with Oracle a long time. I started off in Australia, moved to New Zealand, the US, and um, based in Denver, Colorado these days. So what I'll be covering today is uh, fundamentally production product, but I have to give the safe harbor slide. Basically, you can't make purchasing decisions, et cetera, and so on. And if you could just quickly read that, thank you very much. So let's get into um, an Oracle Forms review. But before I do that, how many people here are still actively developing with Oracle Forms? Most of you, okay. Uh, so the rest of you, I assume, have got Oracle Forms systems that you don't quite know what to do with. So uh, how many people have uh, done anything at all with Application Express to date? Oh, okay, quite a few of you. Good to see. So let's get into this. Oracle Forms has been around for a long time. In fact, I started with Oracle Forms back in version 2.3, which is many, many years ago. Um, it's a very stable product. It's based on SQL and Peel SQL, and it's still being developed today. How many people are actually on 12C Forms? Okay, quite a few of you. Good. 11G? 10G? 9I? Okay, yeah. 6? Six. 6? Okay. Well, let me tell you something. All of you guys on 6, yeah, you need to be in a session like this. <laughs> um, bottom line. But we'll get to that. Uh, it continues to be supported. So, at this stage, the latest support dates are out to 2020. When they come out with the next release, that'll extend out even further. <clears throat> and from my opinion, Oracle Forms is still one of the best tools for heavy duty back office applications. So if you've got uh, power users that are hammering on the system, etc., that they know how to run around the system, it's a very productive way for them to work with the data. Um, it's also integrated with desktop tools, and um, it's a very performant way to maintain Oracle data. The other thing is, it is very productive. And that's one of the things that when you're looking at alternatives, one of the biggest single problems you'll have is who you're going to use as your system matter experts. Because your current power users, they know every function key. They know how to run from screen to screen to screen. They know exactly how to drive the <coughs> the application to be exceedingly productive. And so any alternative that you bring in, they're going to be like, oh, no, it's not as quick. Oh, no, it's different, etc." And so that's one of the things you're going to be com um, confronted with as you go forward. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies. So there are a number of what I consider weaknesses with forms. There's issues with browser support. Um, they've come out with a, a Java web start. Availability on mobile devices. How many people have tried to run forms on mobile? <laughs> exactly. Um, so another one of my favorites is often the, the business logic is hidden inside of the triggers, the various you know, item level triggers and block level triggers, etc. But probably one of the biggest weaknesses is the next one here. It's difficult to find skilled Oracle Forms developers. So, you know, I don't think you're going to find many college graduates that want to go and work on Oracle Forms. And so the actual available pool of skilled developers is not growing. And I think that that's a real problem for people who want to continue to work Oracle Forms. Now, there's always exceptions. Excuse me, Matt, no taking photos. Sorry, Matt here is a fellow Australian, so I've got to keep him in line. Sorry. Yeah, you will be. It's all right. <laughs> we'll talk. I'm going to use that against you in the future. <laughs> I, I, I do not doubt that. Um, for the older forms applications, then, you know, when I was building forms, then providing the users knew how to 
operate with the old query forms and that sort of thing, then they could drive it and, you know, as I was saying before, the power users learnt very well how to really drive it, but it wasn't very intuitive. And also, it takes significant time for those end users to become productive. You know, you'd roll out an application, you'd have to train all your users, and over time, yes, they would become productive, but initially, then it was quite slow. So, I decided to do up this little prognosis of things that you should do. So some of the questions you should be asking yourself, are you on a supported version? Those of you who said you're on six, the answer to that one is definitely no, okay? But many of you are on the latest version. So yes, you know, the answer to that is yes. Can you easily upgrade? So with Oracle Forms, you know, they have upgrade paths. Sometimes you have to stop at intermediate ones depending on how old you are but generally you can upgrade them. So therefore, many people are looking at this little diamond here. It's the one that's meeting all of your requirements. And this is one of the areas where, you know, you really need to think about what is your forms application doing? And is it meeting all of the requirements, some of them or none of them? And for many people, it is meeting their requirements. And my honest belief is you stay on forms. If forms is doing the job for you, then why would you spend a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money moving off Oracle Forms? On the proviso that you are keeping it up to date in supported versions. And I'm not just saying that because I'm Oracle, I'm saying that because of the fact any time you decide to start moving to a new technology, it's going to take effort, it's going to require you to really go back and look at the requirements and see just how important they are, etc. It takes a lot of effort. So the next thing is here, um, are they net new requirements? And if they're net new requirements, then one of the things is keep your Oracle Forms for what it's doing and it's doing well, but then also introduce new tools. So you'll notice I've said build new apps in question mark. I'm not saying just in Application Express. Look at other tools, see what's available. The reason being that you can keep your core form systems running and then as you have sort of mobile requirements or you have requirements that are company wide etc then you can start bringing in additional tools to meet those specific requirements. If the answers to these are no then that's when you really need to start looking at what are your alternatives to your Oracle forms, your current forms applications. So. There's a number of reasons why you want to upgrade your Oracle Forms if you're not on the latest version. Taking advantage of the new features, uh, performance, scalability, integration, etc. Um, this one here. So how many people have got Oracle Form systems that really haven't been touched in many years? Yeah. Well, how secure are they? That's really a big question mark. Why? Because they've been running for years and so you haven't been testing for vulnerabilities, you haven't been doing any sort of checks on what the applications are actually like because they just keep running. Um, you know, when I first started back with Forms 2.3, security was that, you know, the user had credentials to log in. And that was about as far as it went. We didn't know about cross-site scripting, we didn't know about SQL injection. Those sort of things weren't um, things that were forefront in our mind. Yet many of those applications that were built many years ago are still running today. And so that's one of the things that I think you really need to look at is how vulnerable are they? And is that a reason that you should be looking at uh, upgrading them or looking at additional, uh, you know, different sorts of tools? Uh, this screenshot down in the corner here doesn't look much like a Forms application, but it is actually built with Forms. In fact, I got that directly from Mike Ferranti, who's the Oracle Forms PM, um, who built this Forms application to re replicate, I think it was OIM or something. Um, and so you can build modern looking applications with Oracle Forms with the latest version. So they've come a long way from the old uh, green screen, which is what I started on, and then the client server ones, to where you can build you know, good applications using Oracle Forms. So looking at, you know, predominantly looking at um, forms that haven't been updated, 
Often they don't have a very good look and feel. There's clunky user experience, they're non-intuitive, there's problems with accessibility, responsiveness, etc. But I think some of the primary drivers for people looking at additional tools is on the other side there. So, as I said before, my belief is that predominantly Oracle Forms is very good for back office, but it's not very good for company wide because of the fact that you know there's problems with installations, um, you've got issues with uh, it being not exactly a, a tool that you can just roll out and people will just use. Um, you know, if you've got external requirements, so if you need to build applications for your partners or for your customers, then making them go through forms can often be a roadblock that you can't get around. Obviously mobile's in there, and then net new requirements. So, you know, way back when I started, if you wanted to do vacation, you'd send an email to your manager, and he would send it off to the HR folks, and they'd enter in your vacation time. How many people do that anymore? Right? These days, it's all self-service. And Oracle Forms, in my belief, is not one of the best tools for self-service type applications. Because of the fact, when you roll out a, a company-wide application, or one for partners, customers, etc., then they should be highly intuitive, and they shouldn't need training in how to use the application at all. It should all be very straightforward to them. Instead, they should need training, potentially, in what the business processes are only. In other words, okay, if someone comes in with this, then you should do X, Y, or Z. Uh, but the applications themselves should be that easy to use that they don't need training on that anymore. So let's talk about forms migration. There's a number of challenges. Again, finding forms developers. So, you know, I've talked to customers that have had Oracle form systems that they've been running for 20 years. The original forms developers have long gone and nobody really knows exactly what the code's doing. Another problem is finding system matter experts. Same sort of problem. The application's been running for a long time, and sometimes you can struggle to find people who really know what the business rules should be. The next one can't be understated enough. It's non-trivial. Oracle Forms, you build big, complex applications, and to move it to anything else is going to take time, it's going to take effort, and you're going to have to make sure that the most important business rules are actually met by the new application. So that means being able to really get in under the covers and find out just what business rules are being implemented. Now some of them may no longer be valid, but you'll find many of them are and it's very easy to forget them. Um, one of the other major issues I see with uh, companies that are migrating off Oracle Forms is they've got an existing application with a particular look and feel, and when they start to do the um, looking at redesign it with another tool, the power users are like, oh, it has to look exactly the same. It should operate the same, because that's the way they've been doing it for the last five, 10, whatever it is, years. And that's probably one of the worst things you can do, because now what you're trying to do is you're trying to take a new development tool and you're trying to bend that to meet a look and feel of a different tool. And at the end of the day, what you're going to end up with is unhappy users because of the fact it's not going to look exactly the same unless you do a lot of work. Um, and you know things like building a responsive application that changes as you change your screen size, you can't do that if you're going to try and you know, so put fields in very specific places. It's just not, they're not compatible. Another one is, you know, the way that you're doing business has generally changed over the time from when the forms application was first implemented to today. So it's a great opportunity to say, okay, let's step back. We, we know what the Oracle Forms system looks like, but the new system we're going to not be based exactly on that. Instead, we're going to step back and look at what our business processes are and what's the most efficient way to work today. So the way that we used to work five, 10 years ago isn't generally the same way we want to work today. So take that opportunity to streamline those business processes and make sure that at the end of the day, they come out with a much better application rather than just a replica of the Oracle forms. 
uh, implementing new business processes or process flows. This one's always one that I've always come across is managing scope creep. So I, I was um, lucky enough to be on the beta project uh, for Application Express when it was called Project Marvel. And I was in Oracle Consulting and I worked at a law enforcement agency for four years. And what we were doing is taking an Oracle form system across to Apex. And one of the problems with tools like Apex is it's very easy to, you know, do different links and, you know, connect things in different ways, etc. And what we found is we'd sit down with the users and they'd say, oh, can we do this? And it's like, oh, sure, that's easy. Can you do this? Oh, yes, that's easy. And we'd start putting in additional functionality. The problem is putting in the initial link or, you know, a new page for something or other doesn't take much development effort. But it does take effort to make sure it's tested, to make sure the business rules are right, to make sure that the, you know, the quality is there. So it's just not, it's not just a, you know, five minute, oh yes, I can do that. You've got to consider the total development cost. And that's why you've got to be careful with these projects of, instead of rep replacing the forms, you're going from this size up to this size. And then instead of it being, you know, a, a three, six month project or whatever, suddenly it's blown out to a year because of the fact you're adding in a lot of additional scope. So one of the biggest problems you'll have, as I said earlier, is getting the buy-in from the power users because of the fact that they're so used to working the way, using the current system, they're very productive at it, and they will push back on, oh no, we can't do it that way. Why not? Because of the fact we can go tink, 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 and it takes us you know, five seconds to get to where we need. With this new one, it's gonna take us four clicks, and that's gonna take too long to do. Um, one of my, uh, advice to that is when you're doing the new design have a combination of a power user or two but also have some people that have only been with the organization a very short period of time and the reason for that is they're not stuck on how the old way of doing it is and they're more open to introducing new ideas of they know enough about the business to say oh look you know when I go through this it's really painful to go through to there can't we just go straight across? And introducing a more streamlined business flow because of the fact their minds aren't so set on what the Oracle forms implemented. And then the last one is actually training your end users. And this is, you know, re-educating them in, yes, it's different and it should be different. The way you're going to interact with the applications is different. Doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean it's wrong. Yes, you're not going to be as productive from day one, but in the end of the day, it's going to be a much better experience. The other key thing is, instead of it taking months or years for a, a person that comes on board to become powerful and, and productive with the application, instead that times down to weeks, which is much better for the organisation. <clears throat> so the strategy. Push as much business logic into the database as you can. So, Big database is good. And why is that good? Because of the fact you're not hiding any of your business rules inside your forms. Instead, you've got packages, procedures, functions, etc., in the database that the Oracle Forms is using. The other really big advantage of that, when you start looking at tools like Application Express, they can call exactly the same functions, procedures and packages. And so you can reuse all of that code and it's fully tested. You know that it's doing the business operations that it needs to do. And so you can just you know, integrate it into the new application without having to worry too much about, oh, hang on a minute, did we miss something? Because it's the same function call, et cetera. Um, select a suitable piece for a proof of concept. Every company is a bit different. How it was built, where the logic is, um, you know, what sort of uh, pages they built, et cetera is varied from application to application. So you want to pick a functional piece that you can do as a proof of concept to understand the new tool, to get up to speed with doing development with that new tool, and also to get a feel for just how uh, much effort it's going to take to do that migration. Obviously you want to secure some SMEs for that and then train developers in the new technology. So I can't say this one enough. Do not try and replicate the UI or the UX. 
The user experience should be different. The UI should be different. Why? Because you're using a different tool. And if you try and bend a tool to meet exactly the forms UI and UX, then it's going to take a lot more development, which is going to take a lot more maintenance. And at the end of the day, it's not going to be, you're not going to be taking full advantage of the new tool. Um, so that's why I say bend the requirements, not the tool. It goes without saying that, you know, the last thing in the world you want to do is build an application that, that is not um, making a significant leap forward. So they should be simple, they should be easy to use, intuitive, etc. And they should be able to work on any sort of device, whether it be a desktop, mobile, smartphone, tablet, whatever. So let's talk about Application Express. So there's a number of advantages with Application Express. Um, one of the biggest ones is SQL and PLSQL. So how many people here are Java developers? Okay, there's always one. <laughs> it's all right, sir, you can stay. Um, you're amongst friends, okay? We know that your brain works in different ways to us, but that's okay. Um, you know, I've, from the day I started doing development, it was, here's my tables and I'm going to build up on top of those tables, okay? From um, an object orientation perspective, then you do classes and do everything from the uh, object layer and you work down and the database is almost the last consideration as to where you're storing the data. So forms developers, we build up. And so Application Express, again, SQL and PLSQL, we build from the database up. And so therefore it's a very similar experience from, um, you know, you don't have to get your mind around uh, the way that object orientation works, etc. You can also utilize all those database objects. So that's again why you want to push as much down as you can. It's easy to train forms developers. So on that project I was on, I must have trained about 20 forms developers and they needed some instructions on things like pessimistic rather than op op um, optimistic locking. But fundamentally, it wasn't that far removed from where they would come from. And so it was generally very easy for them to understand and pick up Application Express. And generally, for the average developer, within two to three weeks, they're off and running. And the way I would do it is I'd actually explain the difference in architecture. I'd actually take them through and give them a little training on Application Express. And then I hope them go and build some maintenance pages. So just some forms and reports on some tables. And in fact, often I'd give them ones that we already had the pages for, but just as a, you know, get their feet wet, get, give them something simple that they can start understanding the differences between forms and Apex. And then what I'd do is I'd have them do some validations and things like that. And then I'd start giving them some, you know, real requirements. Another and very important aspect is on that project, we actually built a new system for the police officers to enter in their arrest records, and it took us two years to train up all of the police officers because of the fact they're on different shifts, in different um, units, what have you, and it just took two years physically to go around, and, and I think it was 13,000 police officers, so it just took time. And so what they would do is they'd train up a batch of officers, and then they would actually switch off their forms logins and then give them Application Express login so they had to use it. But for two years we had both systems running side by side. And that's a very big advantage of, of Application Express is it's all running on top of the same stuff. It's calling the same functions, hitting the same tables, etc. Um, Application Express incorporates modern web technology. It's easy to customise the theme and templates, etc. to get the look and feel you want. Out of the box with the universal theme, you get a responsive application. And so it will work very well on any device. However, if you choose to, you can also use mobile first. Now my recommendation is to use generally just the universal theme, unless you have a very heavy duty application where they're doing a lot of data entry out in the field. In which case, build a mobile first, but if they're just you know, looking at pages, doing a you know, minimal sort of data entry, then really building a mobile first application doesn't buy you a lot. Um, the other key thing here is accessibility. 
And with Application Express, you can use things such as dynamic actions to actually um, incorporate user side client um, interactivity. So, oh, the last point there. So one of the things is this session is called you know migrating Oracle to, uh, forms to the cloud. Application Express is, is cloud and has been since day one. We're purely browser based. It doesn't matter whether you're doing your development on your laptop, on a cloud service, on a local um, installation. Uh, that application could easily be exported and imported into any other service. So I can start by building on apex.oracle.com, build out my application, and then once I've done that, I simply export it and import it into another service where I want to run production. So the key steps, install Application Express, uh, define workspaces, convert the FMBs to XML, and I'll talk a little bit about that, load XML files up, annotate the important business logic, create the Apex applications, enhance them, test them, train the end users and roll it out. See how easy it is? Boom, done. Right? What are you doing tomorrow? Oh, I'm just going to do this. So, forms to XML. Uh, with 9i and above, there's a utility that will actually take your FMBs, MMBs, OMBs, etc., and create XML files. Those XML files are what we need to load up into an Application Express project. Um, with your 4x and 6i's, etc., they may or may not work. If not, you're going to have to upgrade your forms. So, within Application Express, we have a migration project. In previous releases, we also used to have a generation capability. In 5.1, we specifically took that out. Um, the reason being is it didn't generate very good forms, oh sorry, very good applications. And so people would think that they were going to get, you know, this great application and it just, you know, it wasn't the best sort of application that was generated. So that was a, one problem. The second biggest problem is that it wouldn't generate out our latest components such as the jet charts or the interactive grids. Um, some of the key things about the project is you can take those XML files and you can upload them. And really this bottom line here, this was the primary reason we put in the, the project to start with, is to be able to annotate all of your form's logic to make sure you didn't lose any. And that really is a key thing. It's really, okay, I've got all these different triggers and everything else, and I want to make sure that in the new application, I don't lose any of that functionality that was inside of Forms. So, let's jump over. So, first of all, um, at the moment, you'll see here I'm actually in my cloud service. And what I'm going to do is, you'll see that I already have, oh, you won't see much at all unless I do this. Come on, there we go. So now you will see that in my workspace I have a number of tables here, S customer, S debt, AMP, etc. So I've got all the tables and data from the underlying forms. Okay, and that's primarily what I need to be able to build an application with Apex. So now one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my application builder. Uh, Okay, I was going to go back there, but maybe not. Okay, uh, let's just click on that one. Got to love it when it times out just at the right time. So I'm going to go into the application builder. See, you can see I'm on the cloud. See, so I've met my objective. Just when you, that's a yes. <laughs> so, one of the things is that, and this is one of my slight problems, is the cloud service I happen to be using today is Exadata Express out of the US, which is actually 5.0. Um, and so, I'm going to change that. I'm going to go to apex.oracle.com because I want to use 5.1 because it's a better migration project experience. So I'm just going to sign in, and I happen to have a workspace for this. 
Okay, so now I'm running, if we have a look down here, you'll see that I'm running 5.1. So I'm going to go into, uh, I'll just quickly show you in SQL Workshop, I've already got my tables, etc. so life is good. Go back to the application builder, and I'm going to go to forms migration, and I'm going to create a project. And I'll call this one Kscope. And there's the schema, and I'm just going to go and choose a file. So I've already done some files here that I've put into XML format. Uh, just got to find them. They're in here somewhere. Come on, I want those ones. Oh, seriously? Where's the ones I need? No, I just want that directory. There we go. So I've got a customer's FMB, XML file, and then I'm going to go and choose one more as well. I'll pick up the orders one. So I'm just picking up a couple here. Now obviously you're going to have more than that. But this was enough to show you what I'm talking about. Pick up my orders one and upload them. So these forms, the customers FMB XML and orders FMB XML, they were both Oracle forms that we took through the forms to XML utility to create the XML files, and now we're just uploading them. Okay, so let me go ahead and just create this. And um, see, just like Oracle Forms, it's slow. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> that is ouch. God dang. That was not part of the script. Okay, let me try one more time. You can use like a 6i FMB or a. Well, you've got to convert them to XMLs. Okay, so if you actually download 9i, you can get the forms to XML utility and you can try and run it against the 6i FMB and it may or may not work. If it doesn't work, then you have to upgrade your forms to 9i to get it to be able to run that utility. Yes, sir? When you were doing your parallel effort, were you able to freeze the Oracle forms? No, actually we weren't. We still had to do some maintenance work on the forms. Um, because of the fact some new business requirements would come in, guess what? We'd have to do it twice, once in the forms and once in the Apex applications. Because um, business doesn't stop just because of the fact you're doing a new upgrade. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, so, yeah, that was actually quite, um, you know, it, luckily the requirements were relatively stable and there was very few of those, but there were still some. Um, you know, some new mandate had come down and we'd have to do X, Y, Z, they'd have to, you know. Um, how many dimes did you shoot the guy before putting him in the back of the car? Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, of course they didn't shoot them before putting him in the back of the car. They waited until they were in the back of the car. Um, but anyway, uh, the, you know, so, some requirements would come through, so yes, we'd have to do duplicate effort. But, you know, that's just um, the nature of the beast. Okay, let's see if I can... Oh. Okay, come on. XML. Type. Go here. Okay, I'm just going to try and do one. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for punishment. I'm going to try it one more time. Just once. I did do this the other day and it worked fine. So I don't know what my problem is. Oh. XML. Find that, go there, pick that one. Okay, now we're good. Let's just cross your fingers. It's taking some time again. I'm not nervous, I'm just a little concerned. Dang it! So, 
If at first and second you don't succeed, let's just do one at a time. In fact, I'm just going to load up the orders and be done with it. I blame it on you all you guys. Excuse me, ma'am, can you stop using your phone? You're using my bandwidth. <laughs> it's your fault. I'm blaming you. I'm going to call this one K-Scope 3, because third time is a charm, apparently. Let's do XML. Uh, go to my directory. Uh, yeah, I'll just pick orders. And this time I'll just create it. Are you still using your phone? Oh, I tried it yesterday. Yeah. I was on a stronger network. Okay, I'm going to try it from the uh, from my Exadata Express cloud service and see if I get any further with that one. So it's much the same experience except for the fact in this one, see look, there it is there. I did it the other day and, and I left it in this one. So worst case scenario, I can do that. I can use that one. Okay, choose file. Um, yeah, the, there's, nah, the problem was actually with the mic picking up noise, but we'll work that out later. Okay. It's all good for now. Okay, thank you. So let's go to XML. He's got a bigger problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you. Yeah, okay. Well, apparently. But I do have it sitting in there, so if this fails, I can just go to the other one and say, you see, it almost worked. So. Hey. Hey, Matt, what are you doing? Waiting, mate. Mate, you're using my bandwidth. <laughs> so I've loaded up the FMB. So you can see that I can do that one. Now I'm going to go back and pick the other one that's got two. So here I've got my customers and orders FMB, and obviously you'll have more of those. And you'll see I can see how many blocks, how many items, triggers, etc. Um, and so what we can do is this is actually an interactive report. I'm just going to go into the triggers. And so this is showing me all the triggers for the customer's FMB. So I can see all of these triggers here. I've got post query. Hang on a minute, let me expand this up a bit so we can see it a bit easier. We've got post query, when tree node selected, key exit, all these sort of things. And you'll notice column here, which is a applicable yes, no. So what we've done is we've gone through and we've identified the most likely candidates for triggers that are going to have business logic in them. And so if we actually just pick applicable yes, it gets rid of a lot of the noise. For example, do we need a, um, I'm trying to think, I should, uh, well let's go and have a quick look at some of the no's. So I'm just going to change this over to no instead of yes. While I'm at it, I'm just going to remove that filter so we see it for all forms that we've got uploaded. So the ones that are no are things like key exits, when button pressed, um, etc. Because these generally aren't doing anything that we care about. Some of them may be, and you can actually go and switch on or off ones that might be applicable. But more often than not, these aren't doing anything that, are, that really you need to concern yourself with. So I'm going to change this back to yes and see if we can find some useful ones that have some business logic in them. So if we have a look, uh, we've got a post query trigger here. Well, that's probably going to be handled when we build the page. Yes, we're going to bring in values. So I didn't want to go into that one. What's it doing here? It's finding some item. Yeah, OK. Um, let's have a look down here. If we keep going down, um, on populate details, no, I want this, um, it's putting the customer name in on this post query. Yeah, that should be all right. Oh, what's it doing on this pre-insert? <clears throat> so on this pre-insert, we can see that it's actually going and getting the maximum item ID 
adding one to it and putting it into the primary key field? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't do it that way. I'd probably use a GUID. Um, and so I'd probably change this as OK. With this one, yes, it's applicable. Priority on it, so two, it's pretty important. It's not complete. <coughs> I'm going to assign it to myself. Notes. Should be, if I can spell, should be implemented as a global unique identifier or a GUID. Uh, in a trigger on the, what is it, items, S item table. So I'm just writing a note. So we know this isn't complete. It's been assigned to someone so they can go and search for the stuff they need to worry about. And we need to actually go and do a change in the database. Now, if we're doing that, one of the other things we're going to need to do is to update the form. To not use this trigger. So I'm going to put a thing in here of trigger and forms UPD because I need to update the form as well. Because, you know, based on what I want to do with it, because of the change in the way this is working, if the form's going to keep running, it's going to give me grief if I keep using this potentially. So I want to change, update the form and the Apex application. Just so you have a question. No, you don't need to. It's all there. No, I'm, uh, I'm being a bit flippant. Um, you can put developer notes uh, right throughout, developer comments right throughout Application Express. You can also put um, comments on pages, regions, items, etc. So there are places where you can put comments. Um, there isn't a way that brings it out in this form, sort of format. The main, one of the main advantages of this is do I need to be a forms developer to understand this stuff? Some of it, yes, I'll be honest. Some of it's like, oh, it's doing, you know, what trigger is this? You need a little bit of knowledge. But generally, the most important thing is what's here in, in the SQL. And so, you know, any PL SQL developer can read through that and generally work out. Some of them, they might have to go, ah, uh, forms expert, come and help me with this one. I don't quite know what it's trying to do. But this now means you don't need 20 forms developers to help find all this stuff. It's easy for any PL SQL developer to come through and look at it and go, oh, yeah, okay, I know what that one's doing. Okay, I know, you know, who sh you, I can assign it to someone, I can put in notes as to how we're going to re-implement that business logic in the new application. It may be that we want to keep doing exactly the same thing, in which case, you know, you just need to annotate it in such a way that that's what you're going to do. So, you know, the, this is really the power of uploading these XML files, is the fact that now I've got much greater visibility, oops, sorry, much greater vis visibility into the logic that was previously somewhat hidden. And if I'm not a forms developer, I've got to install forms. I've then got to know where to look. So I've got to know to look on blocks, I've got to know to look on items, I've got to know to look all over the place where these different triggers are. Here, it's all just listed for me. Block triggers, item triggers, doesn't matter, it'll show them all. In fact, I can just go here, and I want to look at my item triggers. Oh, here's some useful ones, look at these. Declare when radio change, when validate item. Okay, it goes and gets the price, okay. So this one here, for example, uh, it goes and gets the suggested wholesale price and the name and puts them into those. Well, oh, this one here, use dynamic actions. To replicate functionality. Okay, boom. So I might put a tag in here of DA. Um, so, yeah, this is how Forms did it. We're going to use just a different tool or a different capability with an Apex to achieve the same objective. You had a question, sir? Yeah. Uh, so this is like from the Forms 
Yeah. PLL where a bunch of business Sure. So you can upload the PLLs, the RMBs, the MMBs, the FMBs. Um, you can upload all of that stuff through X uh, once you've converted them to XMLs and then look at all that logic. Okay, so again, this is just a way for you to get uh, insight into the, the, um, the logic built into the Oracle forms so that you can really just annotate it and say, okay, this is important. I need to make sure somebody's taking care of this. Okay, that's the whole purpose of our migration project. It's not a magic bullet. Now it's not going to generate anything. And we really don't want to generate anything. And the reason being that if I go back over here, so I'm back in apex.oracle.com, I think. No, I'm not. Hang on, wrong one. Let's go back over here again. So I'm going to go into apex.oracle.com and I'll sign back in. Sign one, sign in. So the reason being that the generation component of Application Express, you should just use a standard create application wizard. So how many people were here yesterday for the Sunday Symposium? So you would have seen Joel play with the blueprint, which is only available on apex.oracle.com, and that's why I'm on apex.oracle.com. And I'm going to call this one KScope, and I'm going to add a page. And um, I'm going to add a report. So this version you'll see is slightly to the one Joel was using. He was using the one on our development server. Um, but I want to do a table of view. And here's all my tables. So I want one on customer. So this is going to be customers. And I want to include the form. And I can even change the icon and what have you if I wanted for that page, but I'll leave it alone. I'm going to add that page in. So instead of trying to generate it from the forms, what I'm doing now is I'm saying, okay, I've got these tables and I'm just going to build an application on top of that. So I can just keep going. So, you know, I might want a calendar. And now I'm going to have to remember which table actually has a Okay, um, I would say it's an order. It's got to have a date in it, surely. Date ordered? Hmm. It's not going to, well, that one's actually, we might do a duration-based calendar. Um, oh, yeah, great fields to display. So therefore, I think we might have a view. Hang on. Um... Order, order, where, okay, where's my view? I thought there was a view in here. Not seeing my view. Um, but, you know, it's just a case of you can start building up these pages. Uh, yeah, I'd have to actually, okay, well, let's just do this. I don't care. We'll just do um, payment type will do. Don't really care. I'm just going to do the date shipped. That's the one we care about. Um, and this is going to be date shipped. So it's not always going to produce exactly what I want, but all I have to go do is go in afterwards, do a join from the order ID off to the table I need for the customer or what have you that I actually want to show in this calendar. But for now, it gives me a good starting point. And I can just keep adding as many pages as I want on whatever I need. So um, let's do another report. So one of the other, sorry, I'm actually going to do an interactive grid. So one of the key things that um, I started as product manager about 10 years ago, and I came from an Oracle Forms background. And one of the deficiencies that I identified right then was the ability to build master detail detail. Because in Oracle Forms land, you often build master detail detail type pages. And with Application Express, you could do it, but it took a lot of work. With Application Express 5.1, we now have interactive grids, and now we can build interactive grid, we can build master detail, detail relationships as much as we like. So I'm just gonna call this one IG. Again, I'm gonna do a table of view, and I'm going to pick, I'm gonna start with customer. That'll do, and I'll add that in. So the other key thing is, as uh, Joel showed yesterday, there's a number of features you can add. So I want access control. 
I, I don't really want any of that stuff. Yeah, I want an activity reporting. I want help pages. Time zone support's important to me. Feedback, sure. And yeah, it's useful to have user profiles. I'm going to go for the slate look because I like slate. And uh, I'm going to pick a Foex color here. So I'm going the blue color for Foex. And um, the Foex guys are pretty happy. So I'm going to pick the smiley face. And then I've got other settings down here. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and create this application. So if I go back to my presentation quickly, and I go back to my list of what we're doing. So I already had a cloud instance or a hosted instance, so I didn't need to do the installation. Had a workspace. I didn't show you doing this, but it's just a matter of getting the right utility and doing that, converting to XML. I loaded up the XML files multiple times. Only once worked, but that's okay. Um, and then I did some annotation, and the annotation isn't going to help me in the generation. That's just so that I can go back to it after I've generated the application and, oh yeah, I've got to do this. I've created my application, and now it's time to go and enhance it, and then I'm ready to roll with it. So here's my application, and I can run it. So uh, that should be right. And so I've got my customers, and I've got a form on customers, and so you can see, you know, this is actually pretty good. I'd probably do a list of values on city. I'd do a list of values on state. But it's given me a good starting point where now I just have to go and do some modifications until it's, you know, meeting my requirements. Now there was one over there where when I selected a product, it went and got the description and the order price. Um, of course, I didn't do a form on orders, but I would actually go in and put a dynamic action in to implement that functionality. Um, you know, with the date shipped here, if I go, I said if I go here, okay, what, oh, the reason being because I've got a modal page up, if I go to date shipped, then I can see a calendar with nothing on it because of the fact my orders must be back here somewhere. Sure, I'll find them if I keep going far enough. I should look when the orders actually are. But anyway, they will be back there somewhere in the calendar. Um, now I've got this interactive grid here on customers. So here's my customers. And at the moment this is non-editable, but I can make it editable if I want to. Oh sorry, it is editable by default. Um, and I'm just going to quickly go in and uh, actually I just want to edit the page. So I'm just going to go into Application Express and I'm just going to add in some additional children. So First of all, I'm going to call this one customers. And you will see here that this is just a select statement from the S customer table. Okay? If I actually go to my SQL workshop and my object browser, open that up in a new tab, then I can go and have a quick look at that table. Um, or if I have a look, sorry, at my orders table, there should be a customer ID on there. And there is, great. So now I'm going to go back over to page designer. And down here, you'll see I've got regions. And I'm just going to select an interactive grid. And I'm just going to drop it. And of course, it's much easier to do when your screen isn't quite so small. Just saying. It's right there, please. When I've got my 22 inch screen, really easy. On this little baby, not quite so easy. So I've got orders. If I can spell, it would help. Orders, interactive grid, select asterisk from S board. Okay, let's save this, let's run it. So one of the great things about Application Express is as soon as you actually make a save, it's actually saving it as metadata. I don't have to generate my FMB or any of that sort of stuff. I just run it. Save it, run it. I said run it. Thank you. So now I have my customers and then below that I have my orders. And you'll see I've got all my orders coming through. Well that's not quite what I want. I only want to see the orders for the customer above. So I need to go back in 
and I need to edit this. So what I'm going to do is down here, there's a property called master region, and my master region is customers. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to actually define what the foreign key relationship is. So I've got a customer ID here, and if I just type in into my filter here, master, I need to tell it what the master column is out of my customers table. So these columns here are the columns out of customer, not out of S order. So at the moment I'm on the S orders region, okay? Uh, and I'm trying to look up this customer ID, so I'm just going to select the ID column. Boom. Save it. Oh, the other thing I'd probably do is I'll go under attributes. Oh, sorry, no. Go to orders. And instead of it being interactive report, I'll just make it a standard region so I can see the header on it. And save that, run it. And so now, in the matter of a few minutes, I've got my customers and I've got orders. So if I go down, I should see different orders. And you'll notice it's starting at 20 now. If I select this guy, Big John, so now it's starting at 121. So I just built a master detail relationship. And I can have any number of these wide, any number deep. I can just keep building them. You can see how quickly and easily I could start building out these pages similar to what you had with the master detail and forms. Um, and so really, that's one of the key reasons we took out all the generation capability. Start from a new application. What you're building is a fully responsive application. So you, I'm actually on a small screen as it is. But if I even make it smaller, so I'm on a tablet, you'll notice that my menu here is collapsed down. But I can still actually expand it out. If I'm actually on a smartphone, then it's actually going to change things around again. It's going to stack all these regions if they're side by side because there's not enough real estate. It's going to completely hide my menu here because of the fact there isn't the real estate. So I could run this on a smartphone. I can run it on a tablet. I can run it on a desktop. It doesn't care. It's fully responsive. It's accessible. You're getting a much, uh, a, a very modern application. And I did this all within you know, a very short period of time. And that's what I'm saying. If you go back to this list, what are you doing tomorrow? OK? By Wednesday, you should be done. I'm kidding, obviously. Obviously, I'm kidding. So, questions. I know I've only got a few minutes left. But it's all right, because I'm also the next speaker in here, so I can go as long as I want. Okay, so let me go back to a slide here. Um, let me just highlight this one here for you, right? I'm going to put it in bold and I'm going to make it red. Okay? I cannot stress this enough. Do not, see the word not. Try and replicate the forms UI or UX. We do not bring in the layer. We do not want the layer. Okay? When we did you see me do anything with the layout based on what the forms look like? And the answer is no. Why? Because of the fact then I get into the trap of oh I've got to go and change every I generate stuff and then I basically throw away what I generate because I've now got to go and put every single item exactly where it was on the other one. I've got to do a page that looks exactly like it did over here. No. As soon as you go down that path, you're in a pain and suffering because it'll take you three times as long, more than that, to actually create your applications. They'll be harder to maintain. You will not be using the best capabilities of, of the new tool, being Application Express. And in the end of the day, your users still won't be happy. So what you've got to do, the first thing you've got to do, and this is why you do a proof of concept, is you get your power users and your other users and you say, this is what the new application is going to look like. And they're going to go, oh, no, 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 we have to have, sorry, no, we can't. We're building a modern application that's responsive. See, look, if I try and put it exactly here, that works great on your monitor, but what happens if I'm working on a tablet? Oh, I'm sorry, that button's now off the edge of the page. That's not very good, is it? No. So therefore, you have to get them 
to not rep to understand that you're not going to replicate the look and feel. Okay? Cannot say that enough. So the UI is interpreted by the tool then? Like so, okay. What, what's happening when we build an Apex application? Let me just quickly go over to there. Is I'm just going to expand this back out again. Right? I'll go back into my page designer. This is a representation of what the form looks like. Okay? Uh, let me go to another page here. Let me go to the 21 here, which will be my form. This is what a form page looks like. You'll notice all the items are here. Now, I can drag items and put them on the same line, right? But I'm not doing a pixel perfect layout. I'm not saying it is exactly this direct, you know, this width and the next one. I can specify width, but I'm not saying exactly where this is on the page. Instead, it's using HTML divs. And so you can actually see that when you actually run the app. So um, let me just save that one. Go back here, go back to customers, uh, go into the form. If we actually show layout columns, you probably can't see them on this screen because I'm projecting. But you'll notice the state's over here now, okay? But this is responsive. So if I make this thing smaller, all right, don't forget to fill out your evaluations. Or I'll have Alex hunt you down. If I make this smaller, all right, you'll see what happens. All right, my modal page starts getting smaller and smaller. Then when it gets to a certain point, what's it done to the state? It's knocked it down. Right? It's also made it full width because of the fact it believes it's on a small device now. And on small devices, generally, your labels are above and your items are full width. So it just did that for me. But that's because of the fact I didn't say this is going to be a pixel 300. I just said it's going to be next to the other one. And therefore, I let the tool responsibly display the, the page based on the size of the, um, how big the, the screen was I was rendering it on. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you have a rule of thumb of conversion? Uh, I've actually got a sort of an alley on my thumb. Does that count? <laughs> um, the answer to that is no. Um, there's a company called Insum. They're down in the thing. They've actually got a tool that'll go through and analyze your forms and give you an estimate. Um, there's other companies that are doing similar sorts of things. Um, every application is a bit different. It depends how much business logic is in the forms. It depends how nasty the forms are themselves. If you've got very simple forms, then it's not gonna take much. If you've got very complex forms, then you know, potentially you wanna to talk to someone like Boex. So the way Boex do things is they do um, what I call power user screens where you can do a lot more than you can with base Apex. Uh, so some of those requirements that if, you, you know, if you're on Form 6i and you've got these very heavy forms, then the Boex guys are also down there. So I'll give you a shout out, Matt. Thanks, Matt. That's what I was waiting for. Oh, mate. Yeah, it came very late, but yeah. So I'll see you at the bar at four, yeah? Okay. Uh -huh. So thank you very much. The next session I've got in here is actually an introduction to Apex where I'll take you through from no knowledge to what Apex is all about. So thank you again. And enjoy the rest of the